I uh, really would like to thank everybody for attending uh, today. It's uh, a good morning to you all from uh, Chicago, Illinois, and I hope you'll find uh, today's uh, session uh, of value and look forward to the questions afterwards. Um, there are a, uh, a fair number of uh, slides which I'm going to go through many of them fairly quickly because you will have the presentation uh, afterwards. I, I do want to um, highlight, let me just close my Skype here, I do want to highlight some of the, up, some of the points um, that I feel are, are, are fairly important but I, I want to highlight those up front. Um, just a couple quick uh, uh, pieces of information about LinkedIn. Oftentimes from clients, whether they're a, a recent uh, university graduate, they're a professional already in the, in the business community, or perhaps they're uh, navigating a job transition, they always ask, why LinkedIn? And really, the, there's one answer. It is the largest professional network uh, in the world. Uh, LinkedIn ranks very highly and the information you put in LinkedIn ranks very highly uh, in your Google search results and this is going to be important for you to understand uh, as you begin to navigate or expand your presence on LinkedIn it's the use of words that we choose and which words we choose are extremely important it's not enough just to replicate your your your, uh, your, your curriculum vitae your bio your your resume, the choices of words that we use in our LinkedIn profile uh, that really describe the work that we do, things we're passionate about, uh, the problems that we solve or the opportunities that we create, those choices of words are extremely important throughout your entire profile and they will serve to promote your findability when people are searching for you, especially in Google or especially in LinkedIn itself. Uh, some of the compelling reasons for using LinkedIn are to make new connections. So these are individuals that are in your professional community, perhaps ones you don't know yet. Uh, they are individuals who are potentially uh, people who are influencing you, your mentors, people who are doing work that you're doing uh, but perhaps have a much more uh, global reach. So they're people that you would want to follow and try to either emulate or collaborate with or look to share content or create your own original content. But these influencers are very important. And also LinkedIn can be an unbelievable tool to initiate what we would call here overseas is a business to business opportunity and I would even say a business to consumer opportunity because I will often not only reach out to businesses but I also reach out to individual consumers because I have met them and will want to introduce them to uh, opportunities and I do this often via LinkedIn. Also with LinkedIn uh, we can use it as a research tool. Uh, again I, I use the, the, ver the phrase as a research tool because LinkedIn is much more than just an electronic version of your resume, your bio, your vitae. LinkedIn is a, a way to vet potential candidates, individuals that you may want to interview uh, for a potential job opportunity, individuals that you may potentially uh, be reaching out to because you're pursuing the job opportunity. So it could be your potential boss, your hiring manager and it's a way to vet the companies, the organizations that you may want to get involved with. Also we can look at specific hard and soft skills, professional experience, as well as backgrounds and interests. And I think the use of LinkedIn as a research tool is it's so much easier with a tool like this today versus we'd have to go to a library and research people and look for newspapers to research people. Now all this information because it is digital and available globally and much of it is on LinkedIn or at least the can kick us off into a, um, a research mode via LinkedIn. This is such a wonderful tool. Now LinkedIn uh, has well over 300 million members globally in over 200 countries and this number 
Uh, I think I put this slide into my PowerPoint about a year ago, so I know that number is actually uh, understated. Um, so who uses LinkedIn? Uh, professionals, anybody that is networking and looking to collaborate, entrepreneurs who are trying to find new clients and customers, businesses are using LinkedIn as well. So we have not only the individual's uh, profile, but we also have the company profile. And within that context, you a company should have what I would call an integrated social media strategy with link, using LinkedIn where it's integrated between what the company is sharing as an organization as well as what its professional staff is sharing. So LinkedIn is not just a, a tool and here in the States there's this misconception that linked, if my employees are on LinkedIn it means they're looking for a job. Um, frankly they're going to look for a job anyways whether they're on LinkedIn or not. Uh, but if I am creating an integrated strategy between the business and my staff, I'm actually creating a, an increased um, a number of what I would call brand, um, brand representatives in my business because I have not only the business sharing, I've got my employees, my staff sharing content about the work they're doing. Um, as an adult, you know, we use this as a research tool, a sales and marketing tool. Uh, students of all ages um, here in the States, it's, it's been a little bit of an uphill challenge to get high school kids to begin to use LinkedIn, but it's certainly a growing, we see a growing number there, uh, especially in universities, it's a growing number. One of the challenges I would make to anybody is how do we introduce LinkedIn to our young kids, the high school kids, the college age kids, to get them to learn to use LinkedIn as a networking and research tool as early as possible so that when they are ready to graduate university, um, when they're looking for the job, they're really not behind the curve. That's still a very much a challenge here. And well, finally, it, it is for job seekers. Now, I've got a couple slides here. If, if, if you're going to take away anything from from today's presentation. These next couple of slides really are what I think are extremely important. The rest of it is just some examples of things you should do uh, within your profile. First one, you've got to keep it up to date. You cannot have a profile created and not plan on visiting it. Um, I will be honest, you know, when I first created a profile, it's because my peers in, in, in my job created it and that was the thing to do was to connect. Uh, it wasn't until I was out on my own as a solo entrepreneur when I actually lost it, my job because of uh, the economy that LinkedIn really has become a tool and it, like any tool you have to use it. It's important to share updates with your public, the connections, uh, your affiliations and within your groups that you're a member of. So it's a continuous sharing of content. It's commenting frequently on other people's updates. It's not enough to say, hey, that's you know nice, nice uh, article or thank you for sharing. What really highlights your professional brand is to comment on somebody's updates, but also provide your view, your insight about why you felt this information was important. Uh, also sharing people's updates, including their blog posts, with your network. Uh, for example, I wish I could show it to you right now. I just saw an infographic uh, that was shared by a, a, a LinkedIn colleague. In fact, she's in Pakistan right now. Uh, it was this wonderful infographic on you know skills for success in a disruptive world of work. And it, that infographic is so important because it speaks to how we can we need to navigate around this massive amount of information to find content that's valuable for us and also valuable for the people that we want to network with. Uh, if you visit my LinkedIn profile, you'll probably see it. Um, so it's just a wonderful infographic. Um, sharing people's updates, we talked about that. Using messages to communicate directly with your connections. So oftentimes I will share content not only via my email service but also via my uh, messaging on LinkedIn, 
I will also send messages to people I'm not connected with, perhaps they're a second or third degree connection, but I'll do that within the um, confines of the groups that I'm a member of. So that's a great way to introduce yourself to people is with inside the groups that you join. Uh, LinkedIn does allow you to send messages, so if you don't have an email address, that's a great way to reach out and introduce yourself. Always, always visit other people's profiles. Um, case in point, uh, I occasionally will get invitations to connect with people. One of the first things I do is I want to know, did this person view my profile? And that would be the first place that I would go. Oftentimes, I will not even connect with somebody because they haven't even visited my profile. They, they've hit connect somewhere else within the, the LinkedIn universe. But I think it's so important to, if somebody visits your profile, is you also look at their profile. You want to know as much about them as you can. Um, and this actually is, is one of the, 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 the guiding or foundational principles as you start to build your business and use LinkedIn as a tool to expand what you, know, what you do, what your company does. Uh, look for endorsements, recommend people, publish content. If you have a blog on your personal website, your company website, also use LinkedIn as a blog. Um, like and share other people's comments and thank people when they comment or like things that you have shared. Finally, some of the takeaways with prospects is review the, again, gets back to review profiles carefully, see how active they are, review connections, um, uses LinkedIn suggestion of people also view to see other useful prospects that you may want to reach out to. Check out the companies that they work for, the groups that they're a member of. Um, check out any links or other social media um, uh, sources to learn as much about the companies and the individuals. And again, all this is on LinkedIn. And this is a great way, again, because you're doing the research to check out what common uh, interests you have, especially uh, the groups that you have in common. As we start to kind of shift over into the profile, so how do we construct our profile? Now here, again, in, in the States, there was this misconception that LinkedIn is just a electronic version of your resume, your bio, your, your curriculum vitae. And I, I believe that it's nothing farther from the truth. Uh, I, I think LinkedIn, while it has some of the elements that are in our resumes, etc., but here is your opportunity, uh, either as an individual, as a team, as a company, to talk about what are the issues that you care about, that we care about within the work that we do. What problems are you solving as a result of the work that you do? What opportunities do you create as a result of the work that you do? Who are the types of individuals that you collaborate? Who do you affiliate with? What types of content are you sharing on LinkedIn? And how consistent are you with sharing on LinkedIn? These elements, these bullet points, are really an essential component of your professional brand. When we look specifically at the profile, I kind of distinguish in, in, in the, the verbiage that I use between personal brand and professional brand. Personal brand is everything from, you know, we all our value statements we might use, our wardrobes, email, how, how we structure our email addresses, Twitter accounts, business cards, videos, portfolios. Our professional brand on LinkedIn is made up of many of the some but similar additional components, your, your picture, your headline, your profile URL, what content you're sharing in your profile and how detailed it is, how you make connections. Do you just click, click the connect button and send out a vanilla invitation or do you go through the trouble of sharing with somebody, here's why I would like to connect with you. I met you uh, at a reception. I attended a conference where you spoke at. I read an article that you were quoted in. Tell people why you want to connect with them. Look for groups to, to join that align not only with your professional interests, but also areas of passion. 
So if you have a, an interest in sustainability or the environment in addition to your uh, professional brand, these there are groups out there that will serve you because a lot of our connections and opportunities that we're going to create will come up because we have a broad breadth of group memberships. Also the content that you share, how you share it. Again, we want to share content that is more than just a simple, you know, nice nice article or nice comment or we want to tell people why we thought their content was insightful. We might even want to tell people, you know, nice article, but I would also think about these points as well. It's so instead of a but statement, you're making an and statement. And I'd also like to highlight some other points you should think about. Um, and again, it's the content, it's the consistency of the content, and also if you write a blog. Navigating around LinkedIn, if you're on this call, I, I'm going to make a, a, a guess that most of you have a LinkedIn profile. This is your LinkedIn homepage. Uh, the, the plus side of LinkedIn, there's a lot of information here. The downside of LinkedIn is it's constantly changing, and so we often have to uh, go through repeatedly to see, you know, what has LinkedIn done? What have they changed? One of the, the pieces that I think are most valuable is really look, constantly look, looking at who's viewing your profile, okay? This can be very important because people are visiting your profile. It means they found you in some shape or fashion, and it's worthwhile to go out and d determine why they found you. Um, you've got a lot of navigational aids. Uh, this is your place to share your updates. So, for example, today I shared an update that I was excited to be presenting to your organization on LinkedIn today. And my update went to my, also connects to my Twitter feed, which then connects to my Facebook page. And then we can see what are my contacts, what are my connections, my first degree connections, what are they sharing, what are the groups that I'm a member of sharing, what are the people that I'm following, what are they sharing? There's just a lot of great information. And of course, again, we've got the visitors to our profile. And we can also potentially start to blog here on LinkedIn. Um, there's some people will, who write very short blogs, which can be just as insightful and valuable. Um, and there's others that will have very lengthy blogs. But think about what can I write about that I am passionate and that my LinkedIn community will be interested in. Um, also, again, the choice of keywords and how you're found in Google search results. Google, uh, LinkedIn gives you the, the ability to discern what's going to get shared and what's not. And this is all in the privacy and settings section of LinkedIn. Keywords in your profile. I mean, I cannot emphasize uh, this enough the you know oftentimes the you know there there could be two or three different variations of work that you do and so what are your peers what are your competitors what words are they using to describe themselves and just make sure those key words are present throughout your, your profile the the headshot uh, another I would I usually like to describe that there are three primary pieces of real estate on the LinkedIn profile. Number one is your headshot. Everybody should have a headshot and it should align uh, number one it should be professional or what I would say near professional. Some pe some of my clients can't afford a to spend you know three four hundred dollars for a, uh, a professional photographer. But there are creative ways to get around that with your with your our camera phones and friends with digital cameras. But wear a nice outfit and you know make sure you're cult you're you're aligning culturally, but make it a good quality picture. Second is your profile URL. Um, this LinkedIn gives you a URL right out of the box when you start creating your profile. But I often will recommend, I always recommend to my clients to share this URL on your email signatures, your bios, your resumes, your cover letters, your curriculum vitae. I even have my 
LinkedIn URL on my business card. My, for me, I want people to find me. and I want them to visit my LinkedIn profile. So I believe uh, that's extremely important as well. And then, of course, the headline. This is, would be the, the second most important piece. This is where... <clears throat> Excuse me. This is where we are starting to share our passions or the issues we care about, the problems that we solve, and the opportunities that we create. You've got 120 characters to work with, and it can be a little bit of a challenge. And you might always be tweaking this, but plus your headshot, plus the headline. This is what people are first going to see when they visit your LinkedIn profile. The other use of keywords, as you are editing your profile, LinkedIn is going to give you some suggestions, but I would, I, and I think those suggestions are often very good, but again, do your research. Find out what your peers, your competitors are also using. If there are different variations of some of the work that you do, maybe consider using multiple variations, but you want those keywords throughout your profile and the headline, the summary, the experience section, the project sections. Um, the content and formatting, uh, not, you don't want a lot of long, dense paragraphs. Break up your sections into uh, using like, a combination of some symbols that you can bring in from like Microsoft Word or use capital letters, uh, a line symbol but break up your content so it's readable, not a lot of long, long dense paragraphs. And the number three uh, most important piece of real estate uh, on, on your, your uh, profile is, is the summary. Uh, in that summary, you've got, you've got a lot of space to work with. And if you run out of space, then you can also use the additional information section. Another thing I'd like to encourage everybody to do is give people the reasons to connect with you. Tell, put it as a um, an action step at the end of your summary or into the additional information section. I welcome opportunities to connect with people, professionals, on LinkedIn. Here's my email address. So right there, I'm giving people my email address so they'll connect with me on LinkedIn. Again, we're talking about the content and format. Make it readable. And we've all really already talked about the real estate, so the profile URL, picture, and the, the headline. And the prime real estate number two is the, is the summary. And again, use of keywords. So as a leadership development coach, as an executive coach, um, I, I want to use those, that verbiage throughout my profile. And also to indicate the tools that I use, the bullet points, the... The arrow, these little triangular symbols, those are all brought in from Microsoft Word, just a copy-paste, and you can bring them in. But use a combination of symbols and uppercase uh, to break up your pro profile so that it's readable. And then use the additional information section to communicate further. Look to share content within your LinkedIn profile. Uh, if you are a frequent speaker, if you are attending an event, if you've spoken at a conference, if you've written a white paper, if you have a PowerPoint presentation, consider putting that content inside your LinkedIn profile. The more content that you can place there, the more individuals will be able to discern your professional brand, what type of work that you do. If it is you know, acceptable, I would encourage you to include some of the clients that you work for. Because I don't work for this company anymore, I'm not prevented from listing the, the clients. But And so this will give people an indication of the type of industry that I'm in. Again, the keywords are going to enable you to be found. So if I were, if leadership development is one of my skills, if I've listed it throughout my profile, I can then search for it on LinkedIn. Uh, and again, you can see there's uh, about 68 in this particular slide, and when I took a picture of it, uh, over 68,000 hits on just the word leadership development itself. Um, so you want to find, determine where, which, which verbiage, which keyword is, is 
getting the most hits. And then you can go in and then filter by locations and relationships, your first degree connections, second degree group members, uh, et cetera. One tool or one profile section that I think is vastly underused on LinkedIn is the project section. And you can bring that in from the project list of uh, content sections. Projects are a way to expand on the work that you've done. Now, here in the States, we use bullets. Oftentimes, you know, have an introduction paragraph about the company we work for in our role. And then we'll list key accomplishments. And each one of those accomplishments, we kind of phrase it using the word CAR, C-A-R, challenge, action, result. And those become usually a one or two line sentence uh, on our resumes or you know our curriculum vitae. What's really interesting by using the project section is we can expand on that particular car, that challenge action result, and really go into more detail about the work that we did on a particular project. And I can also bring in the other LinkedIn connections that I, that I worked with on that project. And so I really encourage you, if you're not using projects, really consider using it. Now, while projects will be its own section, they actually also get bucketed underneath each of your experience sections. So if you look at your experience, you'll have a, uh, um, an expand two expandable sections available, typically if somebody's written you a recommendation and if there's a project, because we, we tie projects back to job experience. Skills and endorsements, again, this is the big driver for the keywords. Now, a lot of my clients, because they are recent college grads, don't have, graduates don't have a lot of uh, endorsements, so I will often recommend they turn endorsements off, but it's the key words, you know, for example, executive coaching, leadership development, workshop facilitation. It's these words that people are going to be searching on because if we use a skills-based headline or we have these words throughout our LinkedIn uh, profile. So these are important in, in really making sure you're picking the, the right skills uh, to, to highlight. Recommendations, I, I will always advise pursuing recommendations over endorsements. Now, here in the States, um, we will, uh, you know, I don't think we have, some people are going to be shyer than others about pursuing recommendations. Uh, within the career coaching uh, work that I do, I have to, sometimes I may have to work with a client to get past that shyness because we want to be able to ask people to speak about the work or the impact that we had. And plus, I'm going to reciprocate by uh, offering to write a recommendation in return if it's appropriate. I also would like, uh, when I do connect with people, this, I talked about it early on, about reviewing people's profiles. Be a discerning connector. Connect with colleagues, people, folks that you met at conferences, networking events. Oftentimes, this is the vanilla invitation on LinkedIn. I'd like to add you to my professional network. If if I don't have an email address and I'm not a colleague or classmate, I can use the friend uh, radio button. But even more important, if I do use the friend radio button, I really you want to have an explanation of how you know this person and why you want to connect with them. Chances are, if somebody goes to the trouble of explaining why they would like to connect with you, you're going to connect with them because. You're you're going to, um, and they're going they're going to uh, appreciate that you took the time to write the uh, the invitation. So I, for occasionally I will inadvertently just send the invitation, but I, I all you know ninety nine and nine tenths percent of the time, do not send this vanilla invitation. Customize it, much like I've done with uh, this potential uh, connection here. Tell them how you met. So within your professional brand, it's participating in discussions, sharing links about um, the industry that you're in and the work that you do. 
and it's continually participating in discussions either because you found an article and you share it on your on, as your status update or you participate in a conversation inside a inside of a group consider blogging uh, via LinkedIn's post use it to complement your professional blog uh, if you like I have a professional blog on my web page I tend to blog more on LinkedIn but you know, let's say you do have a professional blog that's really where you want to drive people to your website but you can have a, a, a shortened version or a high-level version of that blog as a LinkedIn post uh, and a nice thing about the blogs is you can see who's visiting uh, your blogs who's liked it the thumbs up symbol and who has commented and I mentioned this earlier in those key takeaway points if somebody likes my update or somebody shares or comments is I want to acknowledge thank you for liking my update I appreciate it and if it's somebody I've never met before and they're not connected with me I will write then and there hey I would love to connect with you on LinkedIn that's a wonderful way to start to expand your network by by consistently sharing content we're going to be able to stay on the public radar we're staying top of mind because we're consistent and we have a professional area of expertise the more we post and share content and participate in discussions when somebody needs someone like you because of your experience you're going to be more apt to be top of mind and that is you know and I can say that with 100% uh, truth because some of my closest connections people I collaborate with too are because we started having conversations with each other via LinkedIn and by sharing regularly being consistent about it it's just a great way to stay top of mind and you're going to see more people viewing your profile and looking for opportunities acknowledging the contributions of others if you have colleagues fellow group members uh, connections that are sharing content oftentimes sharing what they have shared is a powerful way to extend your professional brand so think about you know doing updates on LinkedIn sharing co the content that your own connections have shared keep track of who's viewing your profile week to week LinkedIn provides you a lot of good analytics um, you can see who's viewed your profile you can see who's viewed your posts um, you can see how you rank within your your community on LinkedIn so if I have 1500 I don't know how many connections I have now uh, if I have 1500 connections 2000 connections I can see how I rank and I will routinely go and look at the people who have viewed my profile what I will then do is I will reach out to them uh, via in mail which I can only do if I am a um, have an upgraded account on LinkedIn I can also use my look for look at that individual's profile do we share some groups together if we share a group I can also send a message inside that group to this individual my point is we want to share content we want to reach out to the people who are visiting our profile um, we talked a, a bit about recommendations here in the states recommend we want I want to see recommendations if I'm going to hire somebody if I'm going to interview them for an opportunity I want to see what other people are saying about them looking for groups to connect with think of the functional areas of interest that you have the technical areas of interest your knowledge areas your past the areas you're passionate about look for groups to join and there are there's one thing of the advice I would add on the group is look for groups number one that have a fair number of connections or and discussions that are members and discussions that are going on because you want to be able to participate in those discussions for example here's the Medina Institute for Leadership and Entrepreneurship a very good group and I actually joined that group I hear it's a very good one um, follow 
uh, group members. Again, I had mentioned if you look down, especially second and third degree connections, the send message. This is your way to navigate around the fact that you're not connected to somebody. So look for what groups they are a member of. Also follow people of interest to you uh, that are the influencers, the mentors, the role models in your life. Look and see what they're writing and you can follow them as well. View their activity. Also follow companies that you're interested in. So companies that potentially would want the service of a coach or individuals that work for companies that I'm actually doing work for. Um, so I'll, I will follow those companies as well. Um, extending your professional brand. Again, here's LinkedIn Pulse. This is the blog feature within LinkedIn. Other sources of content to look for are uh, there's a site here uh, that's available called Scoopit, S-C-O-O-P dot I-T. Uh, imagine walking into a museum and each room in the museum is a curated topic. Well, what Scoopit allows you to do out of the box for free is to curate specific topics. So I curate a topic on career coaching, leadership coaching, leadership development, networking, and uh, personality and behavior theory. I think I've actually changed one of these. But what happens is, is I go, if I go into Scoop It, I can see all the articles written about these particular topics. And then I can find ones that I can share on my own network on LinkedIn. Also, when you find articles wherever they're at online, always look for these social media links. I usually will start off with the LinkedIn because again my LinkedIn is connected to my Twitter account which is connects to my Facebook but look for those social media links. Uh, if they don't have the link copy the URL into your status update and then write your uh, you know why you thought this piece of uh, uh, this article this this blog post uh, this journal article was, was of value. And then publish your status update. To, again, tell people why you thought this piece, piece was valuable. So thinking about networking and the opportunity search. This is for everyone, professionals, entrepreneurs, and companies. The, I really am a strong advocate, especially when I work with companies, is business owners with their staff can be use LinkedIn to become more productive and successful. I talk about an integrated social media strategy. It's using your professional staff to share content with their network about what they're doing, about what the company's doing, and this, this, what you're ultimately doing is creating a web of connections. And if people start to read that, you know, this company is very active on social media, and their staff, their professional staff share some great content. It's not all about the business, just growing business, selling stuff, but it's creating relationships. It's keeping us aware of what's going on in our industry. When it comes time for an opportunity, your company, your organization is going to become top of mind because you're doing this. And it's creating visibility company wide. Very, you know, and, and a lot of times the companies ask, well, what should I share? Share what's going on in your industry. If, if you only do that, okay, then your staff can pick that up and share that with their connections. And now you're creating this integrated social media strategy. As a competitive analysis tool, use LinkedIn to search for colleagues in your field, save the searches make connections to collaborate and grow the network, follow you know, your mentors, influence, and collaborators, vet again professional uh, opportunities, follow up with professional opportunities. And LinkedIn is just, you know, it, it's a tool that's available to you. It, there's a lot of uh, opportunity um, for you to, you know, for you to get involved. I mean, I would recommend that you, you start off um, in a very manageable way. 
um, with with your um, you know within your net to grow your network. Um, you want good quality um, connections. Uh, you don't want to connect with just everybody. Um, you can connect uh, with uh, the you know connect with individuals who you have vetted uh, because you know they represent somebody you might want to follow or get to know. Um, there are some people here we see it. A lot of people are just looking to find out who my connections are so they can reach out and and do their own business. And so following LinkedIn as a, as a branding tool and using using the profile review is just a great way to, to uh, make being a great way to be a discerning consumer. Um, finally, you know the just one thing that's relatively hard and again I wish I could have shown you this infographic but it's just there's so much noise out there within LinkedIn and you have to be a discerning uh, consumer and you've got to be able to distinguish between the noise and what's uh, in what information is of value, of value. Um, always discern the quality of the information there's a lot of people sharing content out there that you know it in some cases it's in, it potentially incorrect it's not scholarly um, and so you've got to be able to vet the quality of that information and then as you synthesize this information how is this useful for me as a professional how can my network use this information uh, as well use this information to connect with your community so if I find information I can share especially inside the groups where I'm not not connected to everybody, uh, this is a great way to share things that you're learning, and of course you're going to share it uh, with your own connections. Remember too is, you know, with LinkedIn we have the ability to continually share with people, you know, what are what are the problems or the issues that I care about, what problems am I solving. What opportunities am I creating? And this is how you start. This is how you're going to be able uh, to start to uh, grow um, your network. And the other thing too, as as human beings, we're we're continually learning. We're synthesizing new information. We're making some adjustments to our, um, you know, to our our thoughts, our ideas, what we believe. And we're adapting. You know, we are a very adaptable uh, race, and so I think you know an adaptive mindset, a critical thinking mindset, is and using LinkedIn as a vehicle to communicate is is very uh, is very powerful. So uh, with that, um, I think I'm almost at the the end of uh, the presentation, um, and if we've got any you know questions. Um, love to be able to, you know, t kind of take them. Um, so whenever you're ready. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Fox. Uh, folks, we are now ready for question and answers. So if you have any questions, you could either put it in the question box or you could raise your hand. There's a hand icon available on the console. So if you click on it, you can have an audio connection with Mr. Fox as well. Let me go to the question box. There's a question already posted. Uh, from Brother uh, Najmuddin. That's why the question is How effective is writing a blog, sharing experience, knowledge, and getting consulting opportunities? I, I actually, that's a very good question. And I, you know, here in, in the States, we talk a lot about content marketing. Um, a, a blog, especially if it is a well written blog, so good copy editing. Um, a blog that really speaks to your your professionalism, the work that you do, what you're passionate about, what you have to share. By sharing and writing that blog, um, you're actually communicating your professional brand. Your this is your ability to really share with others. Here's what's important in the industry that I am in. If I don't have the blog. How are people going to know about the work that you do? How are people going to know that potentially you're the person that we need that we need within our organization to do you know as a 
as a consultant. And so blogging is a way to stay top of mind because it's, it's, it's firmly, at least until LinkedIn decides they're going to change it, I can always go and look at what you've written. I can check the act, your activity. And so blogging is a great way for me to keep track of what you're doing and what, you, what you're writing about. Great question. Okay, uh, we have another short one. How often should I post a status update or a share content? Uh, I actually, you know, I, I kind of combine the status updates and the sharing of content. I, I think while I am probably excessive, I'm on LinkedIn uh, throughout the day looking for content that I can share. I, I think you should have a, an established schedule. Uh, whether you do it, you know, what, first thing in the morning, end of the day, uh, where are your clients located? So maybe you've got time zones uh, to worry about. But I, what I would, what I think you have to do is stay consistent. You know, start off with, okay, once or twice a week, I'm going to post something on LinkedIn until you start to get comfortable and you can make it a part of your your business day. Uh, but you do have to be consistent. If you just have a profile and you don't do anything, nothing's going to happen. The more you post and do your status updates, share content, the more people are going to become aware of you and what you do and what your brand is. Good question. Okay. How effective are LinkedIn paid ads for corporates and organizations who wants to opt for it? Uh, that's actually a good, a really good question because I don't use paid ads. Uh, I would say, from my knowledge of, of LinkedIn and the the paid versions, the larger companies can afford paid ads. I think there are less expensive and more effective ways to advertise. Um, you know, whether you use a Google Ads or you, if, if you have Facebook, um, I, I'm more of a firm believer in the, the content marketing. It's sharing content. So it's the blog writing. It's the, you know, on my professional company blog or personal blog or it's on my LinkedIn blog. Um, that, uh, and, you know, you, if I were going to make the choice, I probably would pursue more on the Google side because I think that's going to be less costly. Uh, LinkedIn, you know, the bigger companies, the ones that have a, a good budget, they're the ones that are going to use link, LinkedIn's. Okay, we have another Thank one you. from uh, Mr. Raju Prasad. The question is, we see that people nowadays have started sharing personal and irrelevant messages on LinkedIn. What is your advice to them? <laughs> oh, uh, that's actually that's good. Uh, good question, because you know I, I, I've I've noticed that myself. I don't know if face uh, Facebook is available, you know, in uh, in your location, uh, but I really lament that face the LinkedIn is becoming more like our Facebook, irrelevant updates, uh, and I, my advice is what I give to my clients. And my advice is you've got to protect your professional brand and you've got to be careful of what you share. And that, so that from that advice, I, I, I try to stay away from those kinds of uh, updates on LinkedIn. Now, again, this infographic that I, that I shared today, I actually thought that was really powerful. Uh, so that kind of some, uh, in a way, it goes against my my position, but you know when people are sharing pictures and quotes and this and that, you know again to me that's Facebook. That's the other social media sites where we share pictures. So with my clients, I, I tend to stay away from that and recommend they do as well. Okay, I get a lot of invitations. Good question. Uh, there's a short one. I get a lot of uh, invitations to connect. Should I, should I connect with them all or be selective? I, I am a, I'm a conservative individual when it comes to the use of LinkedIn. And so I talk about, I think I had the words in a, uh, one of the slides, I am a discerning connector. Um, I, I think you have to vet 
review everybody that wants to connect with you um, why sh do you want to connect why should you connect with them and I will actually reach out to some people why should I connect with you um, even though I'm giving you my uh, email address uh, I will still I'm still going to review your profile. I want to know who you're connected to. I want to know how the groups that you're a member of. If you're, if I think you're looking to just grow your network, and there's actually some what I would call phony um, uh, profiles out there. It's getting worse, and so you have to be a discerning connector. And so there are people I am not going to connect with. So my advice is always, before you connect with anybody, review their profile. Good question. Okay, there's another interesting one, our last one. People are normally commenting to leave an impression rather than genuinely sharing their expressions or how they feel. How should we choose our words, ensuring they, they reflect our genuinity? Well, and I think gets an excellent question, and I think you, you have to, you know, if somebody is sharing content, You've got to go and take the time to review what they've shared. Uh, you've got to be able to take that content and evaluate its effectiveness. Again, it's synthesizing what you're reading and discerning the quality of it. And is this something that I think my network would appreciate? And then what I will do is I will go back to the person who shared it. Um, I often will use the words, you know, insightful piece from so-and-so, um, and a very effective uh, discussion on a particular topic. Um, I will also, if I, you know, maybe did not completely agree with the, the subject matter or the points that were being made, uh, rather than saying, you know, nice but, but I will also do a nice and I would also would have liked you to kind of raise these points as well. So make it also by doing the and versus the but, now you're bringing into your views, your ideas, how you interpret the information. And there's going to, that individual who wrote the content may appreciate that, others may appreciate it as well. But simply to say, nice article, that's not creating your professional brand. It's telling people why you thought something was uh, of interest and why your network should care about it. That's what's building your professional brand is going to keep you top of mind. Good question. Well, well, that really brings us towards the end of the webinar. So I would really want to thank you, Mr. Howard Fox, on behalf of the Medina Institute for Leadership and Entrepreneurship and PMI AGC. Any concluding remarks that you would like to give before we dismiss out? Uh, I just again, I want to thank you all for uh, you know uh, taking the time to uh, you know attend today's session. Please visit me uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, do connect with me if you enjoyed the presentation or if you would like to have seen uh, something else. I uh, would uh, you know let me know. Otherwise, uh, go out there, start using it. You know, get your if you've got a working with a company, uh, get your team, get your organization, create a nice integrated. Uh, professional branding strategy using LinkedIn. It's a powerful tool uh, and it's not going away anytime soon. Uh, but and also be a discerning contributor on LinkedIn and discerning connector. So thank you again. Appreciate it. Well, thank you very much indeed, sir, uh, uh, for your time and for this very interesting presentation. And folks, all of those who participated would like to thank you as well. And please be informed once again that all of those who have successfully attended this webinar they are eligible to claim two PDUs from PMI AGC. Instructions on how to claim the PDUs will be sent to you via email in the next 24 hours. So please stay tuned to your uh, email box. With that note, I would like to end this webinar. You all will be automatically dismissed out. So you all have a good day. Good